What? Trolls do not build. That's what oh, it says. Hey, Internet. It's Jake Hello. from Mini Terrain Domain, and this is Scribes and Scrolls. In case you forgot, we haven't We're been here, here in a while. Alive still, it's been it's been a minute. Uh, we yes, took man. we took an unexpected uh, but needed uh, four week break. Uh, summers can be difficult with scheduling, um, and. Uh, even now we're we're down a couple players tonight, but we're gonna we're gonna drive on uh, and get the story rolling again. So obviously, in a few minutes, I will be doing a I will be doing a recap because uh, I think everybody needs to brought up to speed, be brought up to speed with what we're doing. Uh, in the meantime, uh, or prior to that, a couple of quick announcements um, regarding scheduling. Uh, not this Tuesday, but I believe next Tuesday, we will be uh, returning uh, with Sky Metal Iron Gods, our other Pathfinder game that plays every other Tuesday. Um, our DM is in the midst of moving, so uh, they weren't able to run the game. Um, also, we are working on, normally this Wednesday would be the next session of Lawlerville, the Mythos Investigators Call of Cthulhu. Uh, we are scheduling that. Um, and then, uh, so we'll put out an announcement and let you know when that's going to be. Um, but our Thursday night Kids on Bikes game is is cycling along every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. <laughs> uh, that was funny. I was going to say trucking along, but cycling is better. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, a couple weeks ago, we introduced the D100 grab bag, uh, mystery grab bag, of of really, really, really good and really, really bad things. And I've, I've made sure to let everybody know that Gary contributed to that list and Gary wrote the absolute best and the absolute worst outcomes you can get on that table so when i heard that gary had contributed my first reaction was to immediately dm gary and say screw you screw you i may have said the f word <laughs> and he said why would i say why would you say that why would i do something to hurt you and i said because i know you and that's gary um, everybody um i mean she's not wrong but the, the other great thing about that is it's actually <laughs> all of the players contributed items that are mixed into there Very as true. well um but we're here uh, for Scribes and Scrolls, so we'll get to that in a minute. A couple, couple other quick announcements. As there was just a 500-bit cheer, that means you've earned another Domain Tome. Domain Tomes are this game's Domain Dice. Um, the players can only earn those through bits and cheers and subscriptions. Um, trying to remember... There we go. Uh, in this particular game, they can use one domain tome to re-roll a check and must use the new result, or they can draw one hero point card. They can use three to avoid death, but can only be used by once per player per session, or they can use all five for a change of fate. Adjust the level of success of any check uh, up or down by one degree. Um, and uh yeah that's how those work in fact i have to change those again because of gary subversary <laughs> huzzah yay there we go um so yeah that's how those work um check out uh the check out the merch store um because oh. we've got new merch New merch. New merch. Tell us more, Jake. We've launched. I should should have been wearing it, but it's not Thursday. We've got a brand new uh, retro postcard style Paradise. Welcome to Paradise, Michigan. Kids on bike shirt that I designed. Um, and currently Carrie and I both have them um, and have worn them on stream. Um, but there's also lots of shirt. RPG shirts and some that are, are specific to our games and to MTD as Carrie is wearing an MTD shirt now. Um, you can get those at teespring.com. Uh, the link is in the chat. Um, actually, if you're watching on the VOD on YouTube, there's also a link uh, to the store down below the video. Um, 
I think that's just about everything. The last thing that I want to mention before we get started is, of course, to remind you that you matter. Your presence on this earth makes a difference. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. Um, you can be struggling for any number of reasons, uh, but please know that you do not need to struggle alone. You can come into our chat at any time and type exclamation point help and a couple of URLs will pop up. They'll also be along the bottom of the screen. Findahelpline.com or you can check out takethis.org's growing list of resources. Bookmark those sites, save them for yourself, save them for a friend, and remember, you matter. With that, Carrie, what time is it? It's time to find some paths, bitches. You forgot. I forgot what, my, you, I forgot what I was going to do. You forgot for a second. I sure did. I, I may wow. have done that suddenly and deliberately just to see if you remembered. I have been giving Jake a good amount of shit uh, at the beginning of our Kids on Bikes game. Two weeks in a row, he has said, <laughs> almost said this is Scribes and Scrolls. So All I have to do is pause for half a second and you know that I almost said it's this is Scribes and Scrolls. With which you say, it's like, good evening, internets. This is Jake with Mini Terrain Domain and this is Scribes and Scrolls. That's exactly what it's. <laughs> right? It's, it's a rhythm. <laughs> it is. Uh, but anyway, a recap. I said a recap. Okay, there we go. My music wasn't working. Um, exactly okay, a recap. So we are in, uh, this is chapter seven, or excuse me, book seven under a red moon. And this is chapter 79. Trolls do not build. Um, the under the red moon part of this uh you all know that you have roughly a month to get into uh the gravelands uh to a specific location um before the red moon or when the red moon rises uh when the blood moon rises uh in order to secure a rare magical black lotus that only appears once every 10 years under a blood moon. Um, this is, you believe, your key to saving Vorn and saving Togo. Uh, you have also found out that Tira, your brother, Cain, uh, is also looking for this. He confided in you that... Um, that he has a daughter and he wants to protect his daughter from your mother who is a winter witch and he believes the only way to do that in a way that she will never be able to find the girl is with the magic of this black lotus um while you were staying in this town of turtleback fairy uh there was flooding you arrived just in time to save some people um, and they asked you to travel north along the Skull River to see what's up with the old uh, Thessalonian uh, ruin of uh, the Skull River crossing. Um, because it could be releasing water. It's, it's designed to hold the water back from the Storval Deep, which is a major, uh, very large lake up in the Storval Plateaus to the north. Uh, en route to this location, um, you encountered a bear that was struggling in a trap, uh, and encountered a, uh, an ogre hunter, um, who had one arm that ended in a giant finger. Um, you decided to follow him back, or rather the bear enticed you to follow, uh, that way, um, as he left and you found yourself spending quite a bit of time attempting to deal with a inbred ho uh, hillbilly ogre clan um, that uh, for reasons that we're still not 100% sure, you all decided to split four ways <laughs> and deal with basically activate every enemy on the map all at once um, there was a whole lot that was going on it ended with the 
ogre uh, clan, basically the uh, one of the children had had been turned into a plant-like creature and began to consume the house. Uh, somewhere along the line, you also learned that uh, Mama, uh, or Mammy, as she was called, uh, the mom uh, of all of these uh, brother sons and husband father husband <laughs> brothers and whatever else uh, that she had been told to waylay you by Shadowheart or was it your mother it was my mother your mother sorry Shadowheart's involved in other things uh, and um Mammy was able to escape through a magical portal, uh, but you did kill quite a few of the ogres, um, but you were depleted of your magics. Uh, many of you were uh, severely hurt. Uh, Tira actually dropped a couple times. Um, I was impaled. And impaled. yeah, you were impaled. Vernushka was impaled on a, uh, on a uh, uh, scythe trap. It was just bad all around. Um, so you made your escape. You traveled back down to the road and moved quite a ways away from the location of this house that was slowly imploding upon itself. And you set up camp. At this camp, you, uh, you did some, uh, did a little bit of healing. Uh, you also decided to uh, that it was time to take a long rest. Uh, we uh, had our first long rest in Pathfinder 2E, uh, which does not recover you all the way. Uh, you only get your constitution modifier times your level worth of hit points recovered. Um, Marta stayed up. Uh, I think Tira pulled a guard shift, or maybe didn't. I don't remember. Uh, but then Marta pulled a guard shift, during which time she heard a mysterious uh she detected fiendish uh energies and a voice began speaking to her and it turned out it was vornushka's blood axe while vornushka slumbered um the uh while vornushka slumbered against the tree uh, the axe was trying to communicate and actually Marta had a conversation with the blood axe uh, that tried to convince Marta to take it up uh, claiming that it was so thirsty um, and it did Marta did learn that the blood axe is an instrument of Phrasma uh, one of its purposes is to gather souls for Phrasma um, Marta did not succumb to the blood axe but uh when marta went to wake flip up for his guard shift um flip mumbled something rolled over and went to sleep and all of you oh, are God. asleep in the camp nobody is pulling watch unprotected <laughs> um oh no vornushka yes you have been asleep sleeping off these severe injuries that you sustained uh, during the foray into the house uh, you were so worn out that you sat down next to a tree propped your axe next to you and promptly passed out and you've been mm -hmm. hard asleep mm -hmm. in the midst of this sleep you dream. Yes. And in this dream, you find yourself standing on a battlefield. You can smell the burning fires of the raised villages and the burning flesh. You can hear the screams of those who are dying put to... Uh, the sword and the axe of the orc raiding parties. You can taste the blood in your own mouth. Yours or somebody else's, you don't know. 
just beyond where you stand, it looks as if the horizon is on fire. And you see a mound of bodies piled up. And standing atop this body, this mound of bodies, you see the massive form of an orc swinging the blood axe around. With each swing, the orc seems to transition and shift its features from a grizzled old broken toothed orc to uh, a, a powerful uh, orc woman, uh, then to a few orc men and another orc woman, and it seems to be shifting through, you realize, through your ancestors, through your great grandfathers and grandmothers that wielded the blood axe as chieftains of the blood axe tribe. Until you see Varushka, your mother, standing atop this great growing pile. And that's when you hear the voice. <sighs> Varushka. The last great warrior to wield the blood axe. And then you see rising next to her a half orc man and a full orc woman on either side. And you're seeing this play out in shadows, almost like the uh, parable of the shadows of, of uh, Plato's shadows on the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see the shadow of Varushka felled. And the axe, rather than falling to the ground as Varushka falls into and adds her body to this pile, you see the axe spinning between the figures of Varnushka and Vornuk. And as it spins, you see Varnushka hesitating. Just enough for Vornuk to briefly get hold of the axe. And you can sense in the body language of this shadow the distaste and the discomfort holding this axe. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. The stance is wrong. And that's when the form, the shadow form of Vornushka reaches out and forcibly takes the axe. My thoughts. Here is the next great warrior. But you doubted. And you see the handle of the axe shattered as the shadow of a great tree grows behind you. And you see the, the shape of Vornushka captured in a cocoon. And then a piece of that branch as the tree falls to pieces, forming the new axe handle. The shadows seem to waver and dissipate, but the blood axe, instead of vanishing, it solidifies and you see the actual blood axe with its new handle made from the branches of the, uh, a branch of the grandfather tree. Vonushka. Why have you doubted yourself? I don't feel in control of my own fate. I feel 
in between two tidal forces. The survival of my people, myself. My brother. It is not clear who should I serve or what I should do. It is clear. Your ancestors for generations before have wielded me with the confidence and surety of purpose. My brother was next in line. Your brother was never worthy. His blood muddied and impure. Impure of... And Vernushka looks across the landscape of ash and smoke and red and orange and blood and flame. Impure of what? This? Is this the orc's fate? To be in perpetual ca- <laughs> Chaos! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> no. This is what happens when you bad talk the blood axe. I tell you what, man. <laughs> it's fate! <laughs> While Ricky's figuring out his bullshit, check us out on teespring.com. At teespring.com, we have all kinds of new logos featuring class, different class logos, our new retro paradise logo for our kids on bikes game, and the general MTD logos like I have on here. Teespring.com. Just search Mini Terrain Domain. <sighs> While I wait for uh, Ricky to inevitably drop and have to restart in and there he goes uh somehow you two stayed in your positions um while we wait for ricky uh i'm gonna roll a couple dice for reasons um we're gonna get eaten by wolves we're gonna get our throats ripped out and it's flip's fault unlikely should have been on watch i said i wasn't gonna be on watch why would i be on watch doesn't even make any sense. Be a team player. That's like you, me saying to you, is like, you're an asshole for not giving me the a thousand gold I uh, didn't ask for. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't even have to let him in. He's back. Sorry, I don't know what happened. I my my acting broke the internet. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, the blood axe deemed you unworthy. You didn't even get the full word chaos out. And then you froze. Oh, okay. Perpetual yeah. chaos. All right. Yes. Perpetual chaos. All right. Yeah. Um, so Vidushka is sitting there and, um, you know, she feels a tingling in her abdomen where she was ran through from the trap. And she feels her flesh just kind of stitching together and like loose threads as she's it's not like she can see it in her dream but she can kind of feel it and to what end and then she looks She goes, to what end, and kind of laughs to herself, forever, I guess. <laughs> yes, forever. The Lady of Graves will always need souls to judge in the afterlife. It is your duty to wield me and send those souls while we drink of the blood and the power. Many have died to this end, and many more will die. And you see in the midst of 
where you now stand with this axe hovering in front of you, talking to you. Mm -hmm. At your feet lies the broken, battered, and slashed bodies of Mizya, Marta, Togo, Doc, Flip, Kane. Kira, Vorn, and she will reach her hand out towards the axe and say, I will take on this curse. Because there are some things that are worse than death. I am strong enough to bear them. Can you reach out and take the axe? 100%. I would like... I would like... All of you... To roll a perception check. And all of you will do so with a minus four penalty because you are unconscious. You are sleeping. Seventeen. Um. Twenty-three. Me too, Jake. Yep. See, this is why Flip doesn't need to keep watch. She has twenty-threes in his sleep. Gonna be an eleven. Roll another D twenty for me, Ricky. What's that? Roll another D twenty. Oh, thirteen. Okay. All of you failed. Oh shit. That last one I was having you roll for the blood axe. (laughs) Vornushka, as you take hold of the axe in your dream, you have that sensation as you start to awaken when you're gripping something and you feel your fingers curled around the handle of the blood axe next to you. But you also feel the cold steel of a blade against your throat. And you hear a man's voice say, Not so fast. Flip, Tira, you both are awakened at, at the, uh, at sword point. Like, literally swords pointed at your throats. Oh, not the place. So, okay, gotcha. Shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Wakey, wakey. No sudden moves. Let's make it nice and calm. What do you want? I want first and foremost for you, says the man uh, who is holding the blade at your throat for Nushka. To release your grip on that great big axe. (laughs) Draw your blade across my flesh then. And we'll see if my axe lands true. Vornushka, there are others to consider here. She's holding cold eye contact with this person. So, you see Vornushka... Standing next to you is a, uh, all of you see human, uh, there's three human men here and, uh, the oldest of them graying at the temples, weather worn face with a scar running along one cheek, long hair pulled back, uh, wearing, um, all of them dressed in, uh, dark greens and browns. 
Uh, they have the look of rangers about them. And this, the older one that's standing next to you, Varnushka. Can I roll an intimidation and I want to say something? Sure. All right. Nice. You want me to roll it first or you want me to say it first? Um, your choice. <laughs> Because <laughs> you could see something really intimidating yeah. and the dice just yeah. aren't in your favor. Yeah, are in my favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, uh, Vernushka says, there are two types of people in this world. Those who kill and take what they want and those who threaten. If you wanted to kill us, you would have killed us all in our sleep already. So I will not release my blood axe. Do we hear, like, are we all hearing this conversation? Not that we can. Yeah. Jake? So Flip will <laughs> shout out to um, Vornushka. Would, wouldn't there be a third person uh, in response to the first person? Uh, they get killed by the person who is taking what they wanted. Anyway, carry on. Great job. Love it. Yeah, I'm going to roll. Roll intimidation. Vornushka, <laughs> like her eyes kind of like quick glance over, like cut over. And then back over to the person holding the blade at her throat. And she does like that villain, you know, that villain scene, like do it kind of look. <laughs> and I'm going to roll intimidation. Ah, oh, piss out my ass. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so a 20 a, then. <laughs> um, Five plus a 12. So a 17. <clears throat> I just you, know Pathfinder numbers are like you need like an eighty four yeah, to be like successful. Thirty seven. Yeah. The yeah. blade presses against the underside of your chin, but you realize it's the flat of the blade is kind of pressing your head up, kind of just forcing you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're right. We could have killed you if we wanted to. What I want now is to prevent any bloodshed, if possible. <laughs> Release the axe, and I'll remove my blade. And Vernushka's kind of like laying down, slumped against a tree. Then mm -hmm. she lets her hand off of the axe. And as she releases the axe, it sounds like a the way if hamburger meat was packed around a whole bunch of spikes like kind of like, oh yeah as the thorns come out and it's like this little small trail of blood in her palm and it's her dominant hand and so she reaches it out and she goes shake on it oh. Oh. I want to have you roll your intimidation one more time. What mind you, she, she has released her axe. Yeah. She's, she's Blood, sleepy. She's got booger in her eyes. Bloodborne pathogens are the scariest thing there is. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, I got a plus 12, so that's I wrote a 4, so that's 16. Okay. A Pathfinder, D&D &D 4, Pathfinder 16. He looks at your hand as the, um, as you hold it out. Then he I wish I could roll better. pulls the blade in a quick motion. He releases the blade from, uh, from under your neck and spins it and sheaths it, takes your hand sort of in that, uh, grabbing your wrists. So you're sort of interlocking wrists. Yeah. And in the same yeah. motion, starts to pull you up, like like he's helping you up from the seated position. Can you describe this this man? Again? Yeah, like his <laughs> dimensions, his size. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's Vanushka wants to know. He's going to be shorter than you. Um, mm -hmm. He's uh, actually, I would picture an older, more rugged version of uh, Geralt of Rivia. Um, the Witcher is what this ah. guy looks like. Um, a less handsome okay. version. Uh, he's he's seen some battles and 
Mm-hmm. Um, he's bearing the scars, but he also looks like somebody that can absolutely hold his mm-hmm. own in a fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So there's a moment where Vanushka's heart kind of catches that stab of anticipation. And she's like, and it's an attraction that's based on bloodless and shadow and dark and blackness. But it's an attraction nonetheless. And she looks into his eyes and she goes, I can hear the blood music in you. And just kind of looks at like his, does he have like, what color is his eyes? His <laughs> eyes are, his, his eyes are uh, a uh, dark green. Dark green. She looks at him and she goes, yes, dark, like a midnight forest. And just kind of like, Anushka, if you could get your new boyfriend to call off his dogs, that would be great. They're not dogs, they're people. Oh. Wait, are, are you being attacked by a dog? I... I imagine Tira is laying flat on her back and it just like gives such a look over at Flip because she probably puts two and two together that he did not take his watch. And that's why we they got the drop on us and she just mm. doesn't say anything, but she gives him just a withering look. I don't know if you'd even be able to put that together because you were unconscious. And I wouldn't. Yeah, that's true. And, and Flip literally said he's not taking a watch. Marta tried to wake him up in the middle of the night, forcing him to take a watch, and he just said, nah. So really, Which reminds Marta's me, stuff. I have to remember that it's not just the three of you. Marta is also here, and Kane is here. Uh, so the one uh, that is holding a sword to uh, Flip basically sort of Flip, flipped open your tent and is holding the sword blade in also has a hand crossbow and his other hand pointed at Marta and the one holding his blade to your throat also has a blade at Kane's throat damn it um, but as you say that the other two kind of glance over at the first guy and he just kind of gives a curt nod and they pull back away from so that you feel the blades leave. Just don't try anything sudden. We just want to talk. Hmm. Strange person that talks with blades. I'm in. I like it. When you find a motley group like yours in the midst of the ogre-ridden Krieg Forest, you have a few questions. Some can say the same about a motley crew that sneaks up upon a motley crew with blades drawn on their necks while they sleep. So, better to contain a question. Si- better to contain the situation before it gets out of hand. Regardless, he wants to stand up slowly, but wants to stand up. You lot look like you've seen a fair share of trouble in these woods. Hmm. You should be careful. Not far nice from here. Tip. Not far from here. There is a house that you want to avoid. Let me guess. Was is there a was a house? And it stinks like death. If that's the one you're talking about, my little friend is right. It's filled with inbred ogre clan. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's fine now. It's been pacified. I mean, hmm. heroes heroes don't run from danger. They also don't point their swords at people in the middle of the night while they're sleeping. I'm not saying you're not a hero. Also <laughs> not not saying it either. <laughs> So, what questions do you have for us? Well, you don't have to worry about us being heroes. Hmm. 
But did I did I seem worried about it? I was saying you're not heroes. I was insulting you. I and, and he's <laughs> gonna glance over to Tira, um, mm-hmm. and and he's or I guess he's still technically in his tent, so he can't glance over to Tira. But if he could glance over to Tira, <laughs> he would. <laughs> Uh, but he doesn't because he can't. Uh, instead, shouting over to Tira, is it possible that we have been waylaid by people who are literally too dumb to insult? It's what does that say possible. about us? I think it I means mean, that we are stepping up in the, the world of smarts. I mean, that is embarrassing for the world. <laughs> I mean, I know I could get out of this. I don't know about the rest of you. And Tira would roll her eyes and then she would look at this dude and she would just say she would just say you said you had questions for us considering you've given us a piece of invaluable information one uh the one that is or was holding his blade at Flip and the crossbow at Marta is younger uh he looks like he he He's maybe in his late twenties, um, and uh, he's thinner. Looks a little, uh, not really athletic, wiry. That's the word I want. Like, like again, he looks like he can hold his own with his uh, with his sword, um, and he has that same same look. Uh, of the others uh the one that was holding his blades to you and kane is um is a about six foot four black man and he uh has one eye that is uh the, the scar runs across and the, the eye is just milky white And he steps back, unsmiling. Um, and then the one, uh, the other one, kind of sheaths his blade and puts his crossbow uh, nearby, kind of holds it loosely. Hey, yeah, you, you have any coffee or tea or brandy or anything to drink around here? What do you have in the way of breakfast? <laughs> you come in here. You wake us up with a blade at our throat, and then you want us to give you breakfast. Right. Better respect the attempt. All right. Everybody, settle down. I am Jakardras. That is the older man. This, he points to uh, the larger man with the, the white eye. Is Vale. On this lad is Caven. We are Rangers. From the Order of the Black Arrows. Uh, Vornushka, actually, any of you, I guess, can attempt a recall knowledge on. Tell you in a moment. Uh, you can try a recall knowledge on this is not listing my skills here we go um <laughs> I think it would be society I have lore warfare would that be would that be applicable sure yeah Renushka will um as she's doing her lore check Renushka is going to Okay, society. Reach in her pouch and hand like a small little satchel of um, liquid. And she goes, Orc brandy, and passes it over to um, who asked for it? Caven, right? Caven. Yeah. Ah, now you're literally, talking. It's just, yeah. Let him take a sip first, and I'll tell him what it is after he takes a sip. Oh, God. Hold on, because I'm going to. Yeah. Uh, Oh, never mind. I was going to I had him do a recall lore uh, society okay. um, to see if he might already know what it is. He rolled a natural one. Oh, uh, shit. So oh. he 
is going to take a big old swig of this. Yeah, it's fermented elephant piss, so. <laughs> oh my God. He does that. It's you, brandy. You see as he takes a big old swig, swallows it, and is <laughs> midway through the second one before he just, it spews everywhere. And he starts hacking and coughing. Mm. <laughs> oh! I'm not going to make the sounds, but lots yeah. of gagging and retching. Jakardris. All right, everyone. Let's just settle down. We'll tell you what we're, what we're doing and why we're here. We apologize for the rude awakening. But, as I said, when you come across a motley gru group like yours in ogre-infested forests, you want to be sure about what's happening and who you are. Um, point of point of clarification. Why? Why would you care? If you're so worried about traveling through ogre-infested forests, why do you care about a motley group who's camping in the woods? Particularly since you want to stay away from the house and the woods. Your rationale doesn't make sense. No. I never said that we wanted to stay away from the ogres or the woods. You surely implied it. We implied that you should steer clear of the ogres and the woods. This is our territory that we range in. You range, okay. We keep an eye in this area. Great, great, great. Oh, wait. Good, did, good. It, did you guys do your checks? Yeah, I got a 13. I got a 20. Oh jeez! <clears throat> you say a nine? Yes, that, that, that's a natural nine. It's on lore, right? <laughs> yeah, so it'd be, it would be on uh, on your lore oh, so for society, 20, or yeah, it'd be a twenty-one. Nine plus eleven is what twenty. Duh. Okay, jeez. So, <laughs> Vronushka and Flip, you've heard of the Order of the Black Arrows? Um, they are rangers that travel around the Viseria region um, and at times uh, they have numbered greatly um, you with that check you would know that their numbers have been dwindling over the years uh, but they are mostly made up of of people who are um, it's sort of a, a conscription of last resort. Think of it like the Night's Watch in Game of Thrones. Uh, sometimes people are are uh, criminals who their only chance at redemption was to join the Order of the Black Arrows. Some of them are people that just chose for whatever reason to take on this job. Um, but you have definitely heard of them and are aware of who they are. Hmm. You would also notice Vernushka in particular being in close proximity that Jakardros uh, has a um, where his cloak comes around it's slightly off center but the clasp is a uh, bronze uh, hair of head of a bear interesting we patrol these woods Trying to make sure that the ogres keep their distance from places like Turtleback Ferry. That they don't roam too far. We keep an eye out for peculiarities and anything out of the ordinary, such as yourselves. What does that bear mean? <coughs> When you point out the bear, you see Jakardros as he sort of gives a half glance, kind of knowing where it is. His hand reaches up almost involuntarily to touch it. And you see just for a moment, his face, uh, his expression changes to one of sadness. He furrows his brow. 
and then sort of uh, recovers uh, very quickly and looks to you and just says, It's in memory of a dear friend. We all have memories. It's good that you wear yours. My brother joined a mercenary group. Forgets black shields, black thorns, black guard. I don't remember which one. You haven't seen a half orc in your rank, have you? Quite a nerd. Stupid glasses. Pontificating all the. That's a Vaughn word, pontificating. Talking longly all the time. He just kind of shakes his head. I've seen no such half-orc. When was the last time you boys were in uh, Turtleback Ferry? We just came from there and uh, it's in quite a state. Uh, it's been a month or two. Oh, it just got flooded. Something, something <clears throat> is happening upriver. That's where we were headed. To check it out, see what was what. And we came across your ogre friends a while back, and we were just trying to recover before we headed on. We were heading in the direction of Turtleback Ferry. After the damage at the dam, to check on them, and possibly recruit people to help us. I think Help you for what? You say Turtleback Ferry was flooded, but you've was left flooded. there. How do we? How does Turtleback Fer Ferry survive? Wait, wait, wait! Help you for what? He's looking at you, Tira, too. with this look of yeah. anticipation. Like he seems genuinely yeah. worried. I would, I would say, I mean. There were some casualties, of course. Uh, the flood came upon them fairly suddenly, from what we could tell. But we, uh, I mean, we helped them as best we could. We, we, I mean, Vornuchka there has a whole basket full of pies to prove that we, that they were very grateful for our help. And we ended up saving most of them. They ended up getting everything under control. Nothing more anybody could do for them now. But they sent us, like I said, up river to try to look into it and see what was going on that made it flood in the first place. Renushka like looks over at her bed, like, "Oh shit, I fuck! I have a lot of pies. I totally forgot about so these many pies." pies. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, <clears throat> "Well, we came from the dam, but we got as close as we could." There's been, well, some of the Kriegwood ogres were clashing with it appears to be, and he, he seems to struggle for a minute, like, like it doesn't make sense. An organized group of trolls. <laughs> Organized. <laughs> right. Why are they wearing a fucking uniform? <laughs> well, <laughs> trolls. Organized. They were working together well enough to kill all of the ogres that were damaging the dam. Uh. And they appear to be attempting to repair the dam. I, <laughs> I mean, I don't know a ton about trolls, but I guess, I mean, they don't typically organize, and It'll trolls do shit. not build. Yeah. That's. <laughs> what concern of this is, is is this of us? We are passing through. We have way more important matters. Why should we care at all? Well, you would, said you yeah. came from Turtleback Ferry. I would nod at Vornushka and be like, if we can help uh, rebuild that dam or... Well, shit, I don't know, let them do it, then that would help the well, people back at Turtleback Ferry. 
Or why are we helping everyone else but ourselves? Because, and, and I would like turn to Vornushka and I'd be like, sometimes you just gotta help people and let it work itself out later. We have been helping people all the time. It's got us nearly killed. Got uh, you nearly killed. And Tira. Eh, same shit. Listen, <laughs> if Wait. I die, if I go down helping people, that's a, that's a noble death, wouldn't you say? You're all about a noble death. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And she just kind of turns away and she gets like, that, no, I'm not. Like, kind of like a petulant child, but like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to argue with you. No, I'm okay. not. And I would turn back to Mr. Man and I'd be like, just ignore her. She clearly didn't get much sleep and did get a very rude awakening. Now, I don't recall, and I'm checking my notes and I cannot find her name. I was trying to find the name of the halfling that gave you the pies. Philia Hinkinson? Hinkinson? Iffy Ingen. What? I think that was it. Iffy Ingen. I think. I have it written down. I do I not. Notes. Yeah, I can't. I just can't find that. My notes are terribly organized. Uh, but you see, uh, Caven is kind of rubbing his chin and looking over at you, Vernushka. You've got pies from Total Black Fairy. How? Yeah. I'll trade you. Okay. And he kind of looks around at all of you and he reaches back to where uh, the bottom of his pack is and he unhooks a um, a leather, a dark leather um, satchel it it basically uh looks like it's rolled almost like a about this big it's kind of leather rolled over with straps on it and you can see where there's also straps to where you could like put it over a shoulder or whatever but they look like they're tucked in um marta would recognize what this is probably right away um i don't know whether any of you would know uh right away but uh, it is a, um, let me make sure I get it, what they call it in Pathfinder. Uh, it is a set of expanded healers tools. Oh. Which, just to put that into perspective, in Pathfinder, the only way to, uh, deal with more severe wounds and get rid of things like the wounded condition mm-hmm. is if somebody uses a set of healers tools to treat wounds or other things like that. Um, and Renushka is going to ask, are you skilled with those tools? Of course I am. But I assume at least one of your group has to know how to use this stuff. And I would, I would kind of like look over at Marta specifically, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I think we can manage." I'm not uh, going to attempt Marta's French accent. <laughs> that is not in my I, repertoire, as I, I use say, a French word to say repertoire. <laughs> it is not in my repertoire. Uh-huh. I will say, uh, <laughs> "They're your tools." The magician's hand is best by his own tricks and utensils so please have at the pies help these wounds that I have and she kind of grimaces in the way that you have when you are um, day three into a stomach flu um they will uh, gladly help themselves to your pies. And upon seeing, hearing of the uh, the fate of um, 
turtleback fairy that they seem to be doing well and the the pies they take as a good sign of your uh of the town's goodwill towards you um they seem to relax a little bit or at least cave in um and uh jarderos does jacarderos does veil just stands there menacing uh just kind of keeping he's, his eyes on everybody he's got resting menace face yeah keeping his eye on everybody yep Renushka is going to make eye contact with him and says, I like you. Um, by her wounds. <laughs> it's it's summertime. So, it's hot girl summer. It is. <laughs> Kaven is going to uh, in the back of the box. <laughs> as, as he holds these tools out towards you and you don't take them, Vornushka, he just kind of shrugs and then he sort of kneels down lays them down and starts unhooking them and unrolls it um, and starts pulling out some bandages and there's some ointments and things like that in there. Uh, and he's going to spend 10 minutes treating your injuries. And Vernushka is going to um, take some of the fermented elephant piss and kind of like dump it on her wound and then also drink it. He is immediately, get... as you try to pour it on your wounds, he immediately pushes your hand away. I'm trying to help you. You're gonna, you're going to infect it. You're gonna make it worse. That stuff is vile. Fine. And Venusia just gets to get a huge swig of it as he oh. um, gets to work. And um, if the predator in that last scene was yelling but kept his mouth closed, that's what Venusia does as he supposed to work on it with his kit um let's see so that's alerting okay. everyone in the forest so the dc on the healer's kit is mm -hmm. uh generally 15 okay. medicine check uh he rolled very low yeah but he has a plus 15 to his medicine um, nice. so he <laughs> spends 10 minutes it is a success so I don't remember Vornushka if you were wounded. I was, yeah. yeah. No, I mean if you had the wounded condition. Uh, I, I, I am near... very confident Vornushka had the wounded. Condition. Yeah, I was impaled and I was like near dying. I thought it was dead. Like I, stuff. I was barely alive enough to laugh at Tira as she almost died. But you didn't yep. drop, so you didn't gain the wounded condition. Okay. Uh, I but have the wounded condition. You, you will gain. An additional 13 hit points of uh, healing Vernushka. Let's go. And uh, if you would like, Tira, he kind of looks over and says, Oh, well, they've got the tools out. I can help you if you want. Yeah, please. And and Tira would kind of like lift up her, her tunic and where she still has a pretty brutal wound. You just hear him kind of... That little scratch. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Monushka. Uh, So he rolled a 10, which makes it 25, which is 10 over the... DC, which makes it a critical oh, critical success. Critical success. So you get <laughs> seven, eight, sixteen, twenty-one points, and your wounded condition is removed. Nice. Oh god. Uh, it's it's not comfortable, uh, as he is. Um, he is. Uh, there we go. I want to make sure that disappeared. He is, uh, he, you see him pull out a curved needle and some, uh, some cat gut suture. And he's literally what just yeah. stitching your skin up and flip. Hey, flip, flip, flip. flip. Hey, yeah. flip. Yeah. You don't have any booze, do you? No. Oh. You don't I have, have any. Booze. Vornushka was talking about having booze just like five seconds ago. Drink Vornushka's booze. I don't want the fermented elephant piss or whatever she's got. Oh, Why? God. It's 12 years Do you years have any other booze, Vornushka? Do you have any anything else? 
You and know, this will be a lot easier. Fruit. This will be a lot easier if you quit skirm, skr, quit squirming, squirming around and asking for booze. It's almost done. Just take it and make your breath smell better. You and I would I would take whatever Vornushka hands me. <laughs> yeah, if you take a drink of that, you're making a constitution saving throw. Or sorry, that would be a what is it in here is a it's not a con. Save. Or a, a con check. Is it con? Fortitude. Or, uh, fortitude. fortitude. Be a fortitude save. Okay. <laughs> 36. There oh. you go. There you go. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, Reminds you of an old fan. It's yeah, some strong old stuff. Tribe, huh? Yeah, that's uh, that's quite the trip down memory lane. All right. <laughs> what was the tribe you were part of again? The Roving Wolves. Oh, those pansies? <laughs> I'm and not pansies. They're pretty tough. Uh, Tira, Tira kind of like is pretty good natured with Bornushka, but she does not laugh at all upon that <laughs> that uh, little ribbing. Oh, I and then Bornushka acknowledges and like, good. You still have some of that orc pride. So during this time, as as Caven is is going around and and doing some treating some wounds, uh, it takes up. ten minutes per person. Uh, he kind of looks at you, Flip, and then he he kind of does this, like he's looking for your injuries. And you appear what, uh... to be unscathed. Yeah. He just gives you a nod of, of, uh, like, hmm, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, approval, nod of approval. Um, as, as he does the nod of approval, Flip is going to nod back and then he's going to do a dual finger gun. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you one of these, like, he's never seen this before. He just kind of looks like, and kind of. Um, what is this? Mean? So, one of you make a note. Check. <laughs> when he's all done, he's going to give you this kit. So, you have an expanded healer's tools amongst your party. Uh, the expanded healer's tools allows whoever is holding them or wearing them to perform, uh, administer first aid, treat disease, treat poison, or treat wounds. Um, and because it's expanded, you get a plus one item bonus when you're making your checks. Damn. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you guys have that in your, in your party. Um, nice. we can nice. talk more about healing when it comes up. Cause there's more rules around that. Like if he had failed, you would have to wait another, a full hour before you could attempt another check on uh. somebody lame and it's kind of a, a way to boost hit points during a long or short rest uh but it takes 10 minutes per person to heal so keep that in mind um while this is happening jacardros is explaining to you all well the trolls do appear to be making repairs at the bridge they're they seem more concerned with fixing their ability to cross back and forth over the dam. Not necessarily to plug the hole. And it appears as though whatever mechanisms are within the crossing that control the floodgates are failing. We've seen the skulls opening and releasing torrents of water. With more frequency. Hmm. Seeing a little bit of a look of a confusion, he kind of looks at... Have any of you seen Skull River Crossing before? No. No. It is one of the oldest ruins of Old Thessalonia. Constructed over 10,000 years ago. Supposedly by a rune lord. Massive stone structure holding back the store of all deep, and the floodgates are stylized as 
skulls on the front. Mechanisms allow the jaws to open and release water when necessary. But they seem to be failing. And if they do, and if that breach isn't repaired properly, Turtleback Ferry and anywhere else down river is in danger of being completely drowned out. The help we ask from you is to help us oust the trolls or parlay with them. If such a thing is even possible. But we need to fix the what I the what dam. language do trolls typically oh what language do trolls typically speak? Uh you can attempt a uh I'm using my DM screen like a book here. Um <laughs> let's see what their kind is. And I'm sorry, Gary, I cut you off. Okay. Uh, you can attempt a. Uh, I know what's on here. I just can't find it. Um, a recall knowledge. On uh, oh there it is. Um, nature. Can I use uh, Bardic instead? Hmm. Bardic? Yeah, Bardic, bardic lore. lore. Oh, yeah. It's just a type of lore. Great. I, I uh, got a 17. Given the confidence I have with all topics of any kind from anywhere, uh, I will, I'm going to use my assured knowledge and take 24. Nice. Nice. Uh... You would know. This is where I'm at a uh, deficit as a uh, being new to this game. Um, Ah, here we go. Uh, You would know that they speak Jotun. Oh, I speak Jotun. Ah. Yeah, yeah. You aren't exactly well known for the talky talky, more for the smashy smashy. So I don't know that I would be particularly inspired if you were to lead a negotiation team on our behalf. How about this then? How about you lead the team and I'll just stand there and keep my mouth shut and translate for you? Well, actually, I speak Yotan. Oh, you know, I, I be did damned. it before, but I do now. <laughs> Damnedest thing. Well, yeah, okay. It's then. almost like I lost my character sheet and had to rebuild it, and all of a sudden got two extra languages that I didn't <laughs> realize that I had. And yeah. uh, now I speak Yoten. That happens sometimes when you sleep. Well, that's good. Yeah, that works. So, so you can sort of just stand there and look very tough. How I'm can good at I that. get a new character sheet too? Oh, that's a <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a goblin thing, Vonushka. It is off limits. Yeah. Anyway, well, all right. Well, what? I'll stand what? up tough and. Once upon a time, we'd have had the might of Fort Rannick behind us, but the trolls overran that about a year ago. Let me let me ask you a question. There, what's your name again? Jakardras. Oh, Jakardras, sorry. I'll be honest, I wasn't listening to you before. Um, have you tried understanding the trolls' motivations? We've observed them. Uh huh. There are three of us. We don't know how many trolls there are exactly. Uh huh. That's why we were heading to Turtleback Ferry to attempt Mm -hmm. to recruit others to be able to help us. So no. We don't know fully what their intentions are. But if trolls are building, I've got to believe it's not for something good. 
Maybe they're just misunderstood. You don't know. It is relative after all. Um, Tira, of everybody here, you're the only one I know for sure has actually dealt with a troll before. Mm-hmm. A troll that seemed very nice initially. Uh, and then when aiding you across the bridge, tried to eviscerate all of you. Yes. <laughs> I remember it. I remember it well. Uh, one and, gut ripper. Yeah. And I would kind of like... Vornushka, for, I don't want to discourage Vornushka from this new tolerance that she's feeling. So I would just kind of like... Oh, Vornushka's not feeling any tolerance. You're speaking tolerance and words are, words are power. And so I fast. would... Um, Tira is uneasy about talking to these things, but kind of feels like if we are going to try to negotiate, then Tira's services might be necessary. She just kind of keeps it in the back of her head and she keeps her mouth shut. I should say, it's not tolerance. Wernushka feels why should we care? Do you say it out loud or do you keep that to yourself? She kind of says it. Vornushka, before you say whether you said it out loud or not, you hear, as you're thinking this thought, mm -hmm. you hear in your mind, mm -hmm. Trolls on the bridge. I've not tasted troll blood. Mm, so thirsty. And for the f first time in a very long time, Vernushka feels a conflict that says, Not your servant. And it's like real deep. And like she, really? as soon as she thinks that thought, it, I'm gonna to need you to. It. I'm gonna need you to make Go. a will save. Okay. Ooh, absolutely. If you are, if, if you are servant. attempting to uh, go against resist to resist. resist the blood axe, I'm gonna need a will save. Ooh, well, that's a 17. Let me look at my character sheet and see how that Ooh. translates. Will save is is it on will? Am I looking for the word will? Yeah. It's where, where the fortitude, reflex, and will are. Never works. Oh, plus 14 to... So 31. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you feel you not. the pull of the axe as it says this so thirsty and you feel in your own belly that hunger, that craving for blood. Mm -hmm. And when you say, I'm not your servant, that growling of hunger subsides and you <laughs> sense the axe withdraw slightly as you resisted it. Oh, yes. nice. Handily. Um, you gotta write that down somewhere. <laughs> well... Time is of the essence. Yes, but Marta, Flip, Tira, we do have other things to do, right? Yes, Dead we people, do. your lover, my brother. Wait, whose lover? Mine. I thought you didn't actually seal the deal. A figurative that... word. Oh, it's a Flip. one word. I mean, a a word to, as a placeholder. It's, they love each other. They they love. But Cain Cain finally speaks up, and he just goes, "I don't want to hear this." <laughs> what they didn't? And Flip is going to look over at Cain. He's going to say, "Literally, just said they did not seal the deal." Whether or not they there... did or didn't, she's my sister. I don't want to hear this. You know what seal the, the point... deal is, right? There are trolls, there's a bridge, and then we have people whose soul is between dimensions that are being pulled by forces beyond. 
We've got over a month, Onushka. Kane says. Listen, I gotta tell you, Kane has as much stake in this as anybody. E, uh, and then uh, Tira kind of pulls back <laughs> and she's like, "Listen, we just—it's good to help people. We need a little positive juju. I think we should do this. It's practically on the way." I mean, I don't. I personally don't really care about the situation, but I gotta tell you. Negotiating the end to hostilities with a tr against the troll army seems pretty interesting to me. <laughs> you want to be a leader of an army of trolls, Flip? I mean, he looks he looks at you, and he looks at Marta, and he looks at Vornushka, he looks at Kane. Like, I kind of already am. <laughs> And, uh, Thera would in Yotun say, I must be a troll then. And then she would just shrug and be like, well, with just one dissenting vote, I think we are headed, uh, the Skull River Crossing. Is that what it is? I'm going to assume that Marta agrees. As we'll still make it to the Lotus in time. We will. When we... I uh, I just want to point out that uh, Doghammer in the chat says uh, Flip's a born leader. Meant to be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> who's Doghammer? Uh, do listen, don't ask questions about who Doghammer is. Just focus on the job ahead and the important role that you are going to play in the negotiation is to come that is to say nothing and try and look less like you that look on your face about the like looking you want to jump on people and like punch them i'm smiling is this better that is absolutely haunting ah you would you would scare children well, my face doesn't go that way. All right, here, do this. Do this. Okay, start like this. Grab, put two fingers at the side of your mouth. Yeah, okay. like that. Right? And then go like this. Yep, sort of. Spread it out a bit more. Yeah, and then go down. Yeah, okay. Now that, that's showing your incisors. You got to use your middle fingers to bring it down so it's open a bit more. Th no, that. Okay. Okay. I can't teach you anything. It's like, it's trying to teach a snake to juggle. Jesus. Vanushka looks over at the, um, Jarkotas and says, Are you sure? I'm less sure than I was a few minutes ago. <laughs> and Vanushka kind of like that deep sigh like, So, if you want to come with us, we can head up the road. That's going to be... I've lost all sense of uh, direction, not direction, uh, travel pace on here. Um, it's about a day's journey north. That'll get us close enough. To set up a camp up in the hill, and we can have a view down on Skulls Crossing Dam and get your first look at it. And uh, we'll figure out a plan from there. Um, Runishka is gonna, when the crowd packs up and we begin to walk on our journey, I'm gonna like gently but firmly grab like Sarah's shoulder or arm just to get her attention kind of turn her around and look at me is it safe to assume that we have begun our travel yeah today? yeah 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 okay yeah i would say so in this would... space any conversations that you want to have is it's your time so i would be like 
Yeah, my Vanushka, what? And she looks very intently. What? My brother has looks over at Flip and then back at you, Tira. Has sealed the deal before. Gods. Yeah. I just thanks. hope the deal you've made with him is worth it. I, Tira would kind of roll her eyes and be like, how many times do I need to tell you that I love your brother? I care about him very, very much. We're on this whole fucking quest to get him back, aren't we? Would I do all this shit if, it, if I didn't really care about him? She looks over at Kane. You have your brother. I don't have mine. And then she kind of lets go. And then, you know, mm-hmm. there's one long lingering glance if you want to say anything left before. Which good. Okay, we just kind of have like that cold, mm-hmm. like back and forth, like eye contact mm-hmm. stare. Yep. I don't have anything else to say. Yeah, same. You know, right, Vanushka, that's all. I gotta tell you, you're a real downer sometimes. <laughs> Like, it's almost like, metaphorically speaking, because I know sometimes you you take things literally. It's like there's a little black cloud sort of hanging on over your head. And it's like pissing acid rain on you occasionally just to sort of get under your skin. And you're like sharing how that feels with the rest of us through your sparklingly radioactive personality. And, uh... I wonder if, uh, you know, you need to get something off your chest. I do, Flip. I could use someone to talk to. All right, and uh, Flip is gonna gonna grab his notebook and he's gonna like put on these these like goggles, and he's gonna say, "All right, Doctor Flip is here. Let's talk." You're not going to turn this into a song, are you? No, no, no. Anything, when my glasses are down like this <laughs> and Dr. Flip is in session, anything you say to me is completely 100% confidential. Now, that means that I won't share it. If you, like, share it in a group or something and then they share it, then it becomes <laughs> public domain and then I could write a song about it or a book. Uh, but anything you say in confidence, I would never share. <clears throat> Can I be honest, Doc? Yeah. Doc. Why did I call you Doc? <laughs> because I just said I was Dr. Flip. Obviously. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> There's clearly no other reason why that could be. <laughs> right, wait. Maybe I have a different pair of glasses that would make this better. Let me see. While you're thinking about it, you you think about it. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh. Uh. And she laughs and she goes, my brother had lots of glasses he would switch between when he needed to do different things as well. Yeah, I didn't know. Um, yeah. Okay, so open up. Open up. Let's let's talk. You say something about you and then, and then it'll be like a dialogue. It'll be great. Everyone is so fucking naive. We go about doing these things for what is good, what is bad. Mm-hmm. But there's a graveyard of people that we've killed who've had their own motivations no one thinks they're the bad guy yeah i don't want to i don't i can't i don't want to burden i'm not used to opening up i'm supposed to be strong i'm the leader you know vornushka the thing about leaders is that we tend to carry more weight than everybody else But the problem is your friends can't see that you're carrying a heavy pack and say, hey, Vornushka, that pack looks heavy. Let me carry it for you. Because the weight is metaphysical. It's inside, not outside. And people like us are sometimes reluctant to 
unburden ourselves of the things that are weighing us down. And if you can't seek help when you need it, you're leading everyone but yourself. And if you're not leading yourself, can you truly call yourself a leader? I have been feeling that for so long, but I have not had the words to put it in. If I don't take the curse, then it befalls my brother. If I don't take the curse, my tribe dies. If I take the curse, I hand myself over to powers that do not care that will add me to the lineage of corpses to the lineage of souls I'm torn and everyone wants to prance about helping everyone else and I help everyone else and I can never seem to help myself fucking almost died walking into a, a stupid trap because we aren't born to walk into houses with traps. I'm born for the battlefield. And everyone thinks I'm stupid because of it. It's not because I'm stupid. It's because it's a fucking trap because her mom over there is fucking us all over. And she's too blind to see it. Her brother is too... <sighs> is it that she's too blind to see it? Or she doesn't want to see it. Or maybe even that she can't. There's something inside her that is preventing her from seeing the truth. Some feeling of overwhelming emotion that is guiding her decisions toward what is perhaps an inevitable conclusion. What I would say about your curse... Sometimes... And this isn't true for everyone. And it isn't applicable to every situation. But sometimes the truly inspired, when given the capacity, can turn a weakness into a strength. But it's a choice. It's a choice that you have to make to assume the burden. And it's gonna be a choice that you have to make every day. <clears throat> I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. But maybe, just maybe, if your heart is true, you can use the curse for good. And perhaps, maybe, turn their power against them. I feel as though you came into this group an outcast, an enemy. And you struggled with that because at your heart, you aren't, are you? You aren't their enemy. You aren't working against them. You're struggling against a, a system and trying to navigate it and do your best. I would die for my brother my mother I will take on the world for them no one has ever seen me as vulnerable I don't see a good reason for people to start seeing me as such now 
the one that go about helping trolls and fairies and care bears and ducks and bullshit. And <clears throat> I want to live free. But that's the choice. No, you don't have to help fairies and trolls and ducks. But you can choose to. One day, every day, you can wake up and, and you decide your path. People say that we're playthings of the gods, but it's rare to see them intervene directly in our affairs. <laughs> I said rare. I didn't say impossible. No one talking to me all the time. I said rare. Do you always <laughs> shout when you're comforting people? I find that the tenor of the conversation shifts depending on the person. You have a proud and strong and noble heart. But within, I think you'd be reluctant to admit a part of you is afraid to relieve yourself of the burdens that you carry. And frankly, it may be the only thing that scares you. So I wonder if... I wonder if that's something that you can overcome. But perhaps more poignantly, I wonder if it's something you need to overcome. I read something once, and it was, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the acceptance of fear. I read it in a book that I wrote, but <laughs> I wonder if you accepting that burden is what you need to move forward. more than that I think you're close to your family like you've said and slowly perhaps maybe not for sure you're starting to care about these people like family as well and you've lost Vorn and You've tried to protect these creatures against your own better judgment. And perhaps it's a fear that you might lose them, too. If I can be honest. That stinky, broad-shouldered Barbarian back there. It's the last person that has seen my brother I loved him, but the eyes, I can see it in her eyes. And the last time I saw that, everyone I loved died. Thank you, Flip. No one yeah. really knows what's inside of me. The thing about life is that we don't know what's next. All we can do is get up in the morning 
and make a choice to be the person we want to be and care about the things we want to care about. You act as if choice is a thing that's not influenced by the very cosmos itself. Like, it's so easy. Do I fart on a campfire or do I hold it in? (laughs) Oh, I never said that it was easy. But the decision to try rest right here <laughs> perhaps perhaps hey thank you yeah you're welcome Varnushka, I need you to make another will save, but I'm going to give you a plus two situation bonus for Flip's counseling. I was going to say, your therapy is really paying off. Wow, that is a nat 20. If I can take a picture of it, I'll show you guys. Oh, hell yeah. A nat 20. Yeah, I mean. Damn. I don't know. I could pull my camera down so you can see. I I believe you. We trust you. We trust you. I just never, I was expecting like a two. I was like, you know, that's what you got to get a nat 20 once in a while. Right? So once you sense <laughs> the blood axe. Every time you seem to grow uh, angry during this conversation, as you are walking these miles, the blood axe is continuously trying to grasp hold of these uh like crevices um like cracks in the armor and it's continuously trying to grip at your mind you sense intrusive thoughts that it's trying to push on you uh but they only flit across your mind for a moment driving the axe in the flip's head uh dismembering Tira and Cain, but instead of dwelling on them, in this moment, you're able to basically essentially tell the uh, Blood Axe to shut up in your mind. It has no hold to uh, sway you in this moment. Mm. Mm. So... Tira, do you need counseling or to talk to anybody? <laughs> Tira's good. Tira, we, we have a direction. We have a mission. Tira is good So, to go. I mean, this is a day's journey, so I, I almost picture this like one of those traveling scenes where uh, we see you guys talking as you're walking, and then you're all sitting on the side of the road having a lunch break, and Flip's still talking, and then you're traveling more. It's raining, and Flip's still talking. The sun's come out, and Flip's still talking. Um... I'm giving Marta a piggyback ride. And I imagine she and I are talking a little bit on Yeah, and Kane Kane is probably uh having some conversations with uh Jakardris and attempts to engage Vale um in conversation, but Vale uh doesn't say more usually than one or two words. Uh usually um grunts of either agreement or disagreement not really sure Uh, but eventually uh you get to a point where jacardras motions to you all and points to uh, what looks to be some kind of a deer trail that leads up into the woods and uh leads you to a place that is deep enough in the woods and and sort of sits in a little hollow and um he kind of looks around and says this is one of one of our places easily defensible and we'll know if anyone's coming and looking around you would never guess that somebody has camped here this just looks like any other part of the forest um 
Vale walks over to a uh, fallen over tree and pushes this massive log, kind of rolls it forward and reaches underneath and pulls out a uh, a pack with some supplies in it. Um, and uh, you all are able to set up camp here and uh, Jakardros um, says for uh, Kaven to stay here and mind the camp um, and says for the rest of you to come with and lead you up what looks like another deer run but it's up a small rise and it's at the top of this rise that uh, you reach an area where um, the trees abruptly stop and you can see that uh, just beyond them is a cliff that drops down um, and uh, as you approach this Jakardras and Vale motion to you all to get low and they sort of crawl forward at this point and this is where you can see now you are looking down into the valley where the Skull River runs but now you can see up ahead the uh that's a little too intense that music <laughs> It is like a, you know, those dig it. that looks like skulls, so. So, what you see spanning the great breadth of the gorge is skulls crossing. It's a massive wall of stone holding back the waters of Storval Deep, but only just. Thousands of skulls have been carved into the dam's face, while five larger ones decorate the middle length. The easternmost of these immense skulls is obscured by a steady flow of water cascading through a breach in the wall. For now, this ancient dam seems to be holding its own against the Storval Deep. But unless the rains end soon and uh, end soon, the recent flood looks like it's going to be a minor precursor to a tremendous disaster. As if emphasizing this, just off to the east and the north, you see as as night is approaching, you hear the distant rumble of thunder and see lightning crashing in the distance. The eastern slopes of the gorge are sheer and slick with, uh, with the recent rains. But down below you on the western edge, you can see where Jakardros is pointing out uh, that there is a narrow staircase that leads up into the underbrush. Um, and uh, you see that all along the edge of this stairway, there are hundreds of poles that have been stuck into the ground. Every one of them, each one bearing the skull of a creature Ooh. many and varied you see humanoid skulls you see goblinoid skulls troll skulls ogre skulls uh smaller creatures some it's from this distance it's too hard to identify all of them jakardros draws your attention to this this main part of the dam where you see these in the center is one large skull and sort of up above that is some kind of a structure on the dam, uh, also decorated in skulls. And then the remaining three slightly smaller skulls, and you can see where even now the jaws open part way and water is rushing out. Not quite enough to uh, shoot outward, but it's running down the face of the dam. And he explains those are the mechanisms within is what controls them but if the trolls fix that breach enough to cross they don't seem to either care or know how to deal with this if these mechanisms fail no amount of repairing is going to keep the waters from rushing forward 
He then draws your attention over towards the eastern edge where that damage is. And it's far enough away that it's a little difficult to make out. Um, there seems to be anywhere from three to six uh, large green and yellow skinned creatures, massive upper bodies, long arms, and stacked on the top of the dam are rough uh, logs of trees. They look like they were broken or ripped out of the earth and dragged here. And the trolls are working together uh, with claws and uh, crude looking blades to hack at these giant logs and they're attempting to create some sort of crossing over this breach. And then Storval or uh, uh, Jacardro says, We can never get a clear count of how many there are. That's about what we see, anywhere from three to six at least. We don't know if they're working in shifts or how many of them might be inside the structure. I would like you guys to make a perception check, please. And we're just going to ask Jacardo. So. Are you saying Are you saying that Hold on, perceiving. I do two things at once. <laughs> buffering. Buffering. buffering right? <laughs> Alright, that's gonna be a nineteen in perception. The flip what'd you get on perception? Nineteen. Okay. So, what were you saying, Vernushka? I just want to get a clear idea of the stakes here. So, are you telling us that they are trying to build something they can't sustain and that it's eventually going to kill everybody anyway if it floods over? If we don't stop them? That's what I'm saying. They don't seem to have any interest in repairing the dam itself, just making it crossable. All right. This might be more complicated to handle than I thought. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Who do we need to help reinforce the dam? Well, if we could convince them that we can repair it and then give them a crossing, or that we can repair it and then they build the crossing, or that... You know how to fix dams, Tira? Well, I mean, how are it gonna be? It's a, it's, a, it's a big old wall with a hole in it. Just plug it up. No, I don't know how to fix dams. Flip knows everything. I really It'll do. be fine. I'm more concerned with getting inside there and being able to assess and deal with the mechanisms. If we can. Stop the floodgates and either remove the trolls or negotiate with them. Then we can get crews up here from Turtleback Ferry. Do you know what they want? What do the trolls need? Why are they doing this? We didn't exactly go up and talk to them. It was just, as I said, the three of us. We don't just like go marching just in there. Across. Trolls are not terribly complicated beings. They 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 hunt, they eat, they fuck. I mean, we we got to get it's them all if they want to get a ways across. Uh, we could build them another way across, farther upstream or downstream. No, but... they could have done that. They would have figured that out on their own. Obviously, they're doing it here for a reason. Obviously, they it's... have a reason. I don't know if it's that complicated. They just know there was a way across here before, so they're trying to make that happen again. I don't, I don't think know. they thought about any alternative. I think there's more to the story, Tira. We well, gotta find out think? what it is. Well, I mean, yeah. obviously it's evidence of some uh, greater intelligence guiding toward a united purpose. I don't typically know that this many trolls would act in concert in this way. Especially killing. When's the last time a tribe of trolls killed orcs? 
When's the last time you heard of a tribe of trolls? Tribe of trolls, exactly. They're fairly solitary creatures. I've Tira, seen three Max together. As this yeah. conversation is happening, you hear a commotion across the distance, even above the rushing water. Uh, this is easily a couple hundred feet away, a few hundred, mm. I'd, I'd say like two, three hundred feet away. Mm. But you see all of the trolls that are working turn towards that structure and you hear the commotion you hear sounds almost like uh it's very distant and muffled but very similar to i can't even make the sound but like the sound that sort of barking sound the raptors make in jurassic park oh you can do that sound <laughs> that's it's sort of a oh, oh, oh. Yeah. it's gonna cut there out go. it's gonna cut yeah. out <laughs> but we can all Got practice it. later and tira <laughs> with that 25 perception you're the first to notice the largest troll you've ever seen striding out the other trolls this troll is so big that the other trolls are sort of lowering themselves in his presence it's the t-rex and you see that he is wielding on his shoulder just sort of he pulls it off his shoulder and kind of thumps it in his hand as he's barking something. It's too distant for you to make out, uh, but barking in Jotun. The massive club that he is wielding is uh, the jawbone of some large creature. Oh my god. And I believe it was... Tira and Flip that rolled really well on recall knowledge on these trolls. You would recognize this creature as a troll king. Troll kings are rare. Troll kings are trolls who have survived longer than trolls are expected to and have therefore learned a thing or two. And they use their power and their knowledge to subjugate other trolls. These trolls are working under the under the hammer of another troll, a troll king. And Jakardros, king baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're gonna end this session. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna have Jakardro say something and set something up, but nope, there's Gary with the perfect. final note. Hail that's to the best. king, baby. <laughs> to the king baby so yeah we're gonna go ahead and end oh, there damn. uh awesome. we finally awesome. after over a month or a month have learned apparently why trolls whether do or build. not trolls build apparently boy they do. i don't know about you guys but i felt super rusty tonight <laughs> with the <laughs> pathfinder rules um but thankfully, I have a lot of these wonderful new books and <laughs> the archives of Nethys that I'm scrambling around trying to find stuff here. Um, you did great. You did great. But, but yeah, we'll uh, uh, hopefully hopefully next week we'll have uh, we'll have uh, M back, um, and then eventually Dwight will return. Um, but yeah, you guys are making some advance and learning a little bit more, and you've made three new friends. Yay! Uh, Great yeah, t-shirt just... idea in the chat there, Jake. You should review after we're offline. I will have to take a look. Uh, <laughs> Dog Hammer has all kinds of good ideas. Oh, I just tonight. saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to commission uh, some art from our Legends of Akira artist um, mm -hmm. who's done all of our wonderful character art. A new variation of Flip. Yes. Um, well, thank you to everybody who joined us tonight. Um and uh if you're watching with us if you're somebody lurking silently in the chat uh we appreciate you or if you're watching later on the vod's on youtube we appreciate you as well if you want to catch us live monday nights 8, 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash mini terrain domain um uh let's see our next game is on thursday tune in at 8 30 p.m eastern for kids on bikes welcome to paradise michigan um i think yeah that's it uh so finally i just want to say a huge thank you to uh 
Gary, Carrie, Ricky, and though they weren't with us, they were with us in spirit, M and Dwight, uh, without whom this would just be me talking to myself for a couple hours. Um, and I don't, I, I can't say it enough, uh, just how much I appreciate having awesome, uh, players and role players like this, that of all the things I thought was going to happen tonight, therapy between Flip and Vernushka was not on my bingo card. Not on the so, bingo card. <laughs> um, I checked my notes. I did not have it there. So uh, I love playing with you guys. I'm glad we're back playing again. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and end this stream the same way we end every stream. And uh, you can say it with me if you want. Hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>